Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you've never been here before. Today I'm just going to be giving you a list of things that you can do with your child and it can replace screen time. I know a lot of the times it's really difficult when it's really cold outside or if you're just bored and you have feel like you just don't know what to do with them and all you're doing is putting a screen in front of them. And that can mean that they're flipping through a tablet, that they're watching TV, that they're playing video games. All of that obviously includes looking at a screen. So this is going to help you with ideas on how to replace that and what you can do with them. I'm gonna try to give you ideas if it were nice outside and if it were a rainy day or if it were really cold. So that way you have a variety of options based on the weather because I know it's also weather dependent and some of these options are easier than others. Some of them cost where others don't. So you could take the creative route and you could look up a craft on Pinterest and you could do something very simple, something that you already have the products for at home. That way you don't have to go to the store or you could go on an adventure to the dollar store or something and then you can go buy the products that you need for a very affordable price and come home and then do it. And it really just depends on how many children you have and how hard that is to take them out and go do that. I do want to give you a pointer. I just went to Five Below the other day and I noticed that they have an incredible craft section and I would not sleep on them. You should definitely go check them out because everything is five and below. So affordable and cool but you could do a craft with them or you could paint. So for me, I have these small little mini uh, canvases. I got them from Hobby Lobby. You could probably get them at Five Below. I think I saw them there. You could probably also find them at the dollar store if you look. Pretty much any store that's gonna carry arts and crafts, you'll find a small canvas. And you'll look for acrylic paints. Those are really easy to get out of your child's skin or off of clothes. So if you wanna look for acrylic paint, you can finger paint or you could just simply paint. If you're gonna do that, obviously, you wanna either be outside, be on the deck, or set some type of tarp up. That way you don't get paint everywhere. But painting is a great way for them to express themselves, make something beautiful that you could re-gift to someone or hang up later, or you could just really occupy their brain and using that right side of their brain for a little bit. The next option is chalk. This one is gonna be if it is nice outside or if you have coverage below. So like for me, I have a deck. The deck is covered on part of that deck. And so technically I wouldn't really mind if she wanted to do, my daughter wanted to use chalk on the deck because it comes out, you know? You could just wipe it with water um, or spray your hose on it. But yeah, chalk is a great way again for them to use that right side of their brain and occupy them for a little while. This one is something that I do with my toddler. If she's starting to feel like she's antsy or she is maybe throwing a fit and I'm not sure what to do with her to occupy her time, I give her a bath. I'll make it fun and you can buy uh, Mr. Bubbles bath bubbles. You can even do, I have these like color pods by Mr. Bubbles where she can put the color pods in there and make it fun, obviously toys and kind of turn on some music fun little music. Usually I'll do the Sesame Street rubber ducky song, of course, but they have on um, Spotify, there's like literal playlists for children's bath time. So you could really just make it a fun little bath experience and that's inside. You can do that anytime. Plus the bonuses, they're clean. This is if you have them or you could make your own if you really want to get fancy, but memory cards. Memory cards are really good for kids of all ages because it allows them to use their cognitive brain and try to remember matching pieces, whether that be matching letters, numbers, animals, or just pictures. And you could even do a matching game that is a DIY for your family members. I've thought of this idea before where you would like say somebody's name or write it down and then you would have a picture of them and then that way they remember their family members. So you could do a memory game of any sort and that would obviously take them being patient. So make sure that's the right time you do that when they're like calm and willing to be open to doing other things. But memory card game, always a good option. So there are three games that are classic. These are ones that I know all kids love to play. Tag. You kind of need the space to be able to do that, playing tag. Hide and seek, 
my daughter loves playing hide and seek or building forts. This next one is if it is nice outside that you can either do a DIY garden at home and allow them to, they have little baby or toddler shovel sizes and rakes and you can show them, teach them, let them learn, let them get a little dirty and build your own garden or plant a little bit of flowers or you could go to your local garden. They have botanical gardens. I'm sure that a lot of places I know even where I live and it's not necessarily the biggest of towns has like a community garden. So you can go and take your child there and teach them what that is and what are the plants they're looking at. And it can be a fun experience for everyone. The next one is the go-to classic, which is taking them to a park. And if it is not nice outside for that, you can look online and look up a local indoor play place. There's a lot of different options that you can choose from generally. Um, hopefully wherever you are, it doesn't require you to drive too far, but if it is not nice outside, you can take them to go let them their energy out because the thing about toddlers specifically, the children in general, is they really need the stimulation. And if they're not sitting down in school, even if they are, it's important for them to let their energy out. They're kids, they wanna play. This next one makes a lot of people that are introverted step out of their comfort zone, because I know for me I had to do that, but getting up and going to your local library, getting them a library card if they do not have it already, and allowing them to pick a book out. Now, I know also libraries offer a lot of programs for kids, so you can go check out their brochures and see what kind of camps they offer, or maybe they have classes. Generally, they have free activities for kids, so it is not a bad idea to go check out your local library and see what your community has to offer for you and your children. The next idea is taking them to a museum. You could do a bigger scale museum going somewhere kind of in a bigger city where you go to like a planetarium or an aquarium, or you can take them to your local museum, whatever that means, and just allow them to look at whatever that museum entails. I know they have different kinds in all sorts of different museums. There's like railroad museums, there's you know the historic museums, there's field museums and so on. It can be interesting. They may not totally understand all of what is at that museum but it's at least something different. The next one is sensory bins. Now they probably sell them online already put together or you can make them yourself and again Pinterest is a wonderful place to find that Sensory bins are really good for kids and you can make them safe. If your kid is like mine and likes to eat literally anything that she puts her hands into, and I don't know why, even if it doesn't taste good, and they know it doesn't taste good, she still wants to. But you could really get creative with it and you can make different themed sensory bins, pull them out, whether it's in or outside, depends on the mess you really want to happen around your house. But sensory bins could be really good and stimulating for them and it allows them to learn the different feels of things and get creative. And it is again, out of the box, something different. The next option is simply if it's been too much screen time, have them take a nap turn off the screens, relax, have them breathe, have them chill for a minute. Because even if you're not going to go do something and you're really just not in the mood to get up and do all this creativity at the time, and that's okay, it isn't a bad idea to just turn it off and allow them to understand that sometimes we turn the TV off and you don't always get to have that on. So it's simple, but turning it off sometimes is, is also an option to replace screen time. The next is you could visit family and friends. Now, not on FaceTime because technically as easy as it is, it's still screen time. I mean, physically go visit them. Again, one that you could do outside if it is nice. Just go on a walk, take a walk. You could take a walk, taking them to a field. You could take a walk in the town. If you really are worried about them just going off on their own, you could get a backpack leash. As odd as it sounds, it is nice to corral them. So you could just go on a walk with them. And then the last thing I was gonna say is you could go out to eat with them, whether that means getting ice cream, getting breakfast, whatever it may. I know I honestly do enjoy on occasion going out with my daughter and taking her and sitting in a booth. The more you take your child out in public to do things like that, going out and sitting out, eating at a restaurant, it's teaching them how they're supposed to act in public. So although it might be a bit of an experience for you, the parent, and you're risking them having a mental breakdown, 
it is also a learning experience for them because they're looking around them at how everyone else is acting and eventually they will follow suit and they'll understand that's normal. So it is a good thing to get out and get out of your comfort zone and allow them to experience the immersive areas around them that isn't just in their house where they feel safe and comfortable because that's just going to start translating to everywhere else. I hope this video was informative for you. I try to mix it up, really brainstorm and think of some things that you could really do, things that are practical and some things that may cost some. So if you have any other ideas for anybody else I didn't list, comment them down below. Let's help each other out as a community of parents really just looking to try to help our kids with being not on their screens and also be active and learn at the same time. So I hope everyone has a beautiful day. If you have not already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload a new video every Monday and Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. And as always, stay sassy. Bye guys.